Hello, and welcome to another Lighthouse podcast. For those of you just joining us, my name is Pastor Jeff Glenn. Uh, It's my privilege and joy to be able to take you through the Word and uh, share a little bit with you each week. For those of you who are joining again, welcome and thank you. Um, If this podcast or these series are a blessing to you, like and share them. That would be a a gift to us, and so we, we thank you for that. So we'll go ahead and open in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for uh, the new year that lays ahead of us and all that uh, it has for us and uh, in your sovereignty, planning and superintending the events of our lives. And thank you for your word, which helps instruct us, gives us hope and and joy. And so we pray for that in Jesus' name today. Amen. So as I mentioned when we began John's first letter, there's so much uh, that you could spend a long time digging into each of the verses. And so I, I just can't quite get off of uh, verses 1 through 4. So we'll we'll go through that. Um, there's a little bit more we have to go through, and then we'll, we'll move on in coming weeks. So we'll start here. He begins his letter here. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled, Concerning the word of life, the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. And so last week we saw that, that God you know, is not silent or distant. Um, there had been a period of, of no new revelation, but that wasn't meaning that God wasn't working. We saw that, that God is present and he's available and he's speaking to us today through his word. And just because we have a closed canon of scripture doesn't mean that God still isn't, isn't working and moving um, among us primarily through his word. And so, John, we see, we'll we'll focus today on this verse 4. He's writing what has come before that and the rest of his letter, as it says in verse 4, so that your joy may be full. So he wants the reader's joy to be full. And so so that's you, right? Um, John, John wants you to know that these things are for your edification so that you know, so that your joy may be full. And so John has made several statements regarding Jesus. Previously, he he writes in in verse 1 as the word of life. And so Jesus embodies, as John puts it, manifests. So we have this word of life that is manifested in Jesus. And, and he clarifies that this life is different. This is eternal life. And it's an eternal life with God the Father, right? The author uh, of our existence and of our salvation. And the purpose is to fulfill our joy. So this is why John is writing. So that we know that our joy is found in Jesus, eternal life with him and the Father. And so that caused me to think, okay, what what does that mean that our joy may be full, right? As it says here in the New King James, some translations say so that your joy may be complete. And so as I was studying out to see exactly what that meant, I have this new understanding of of what the word or concept um, of joy is. I've often thought of it as, as kind of separate from emotion, one of the um, Strong's Concordance definitions um, defines it as a calm delight, right? Having a um, internal assurance, kind of an unshakable certainty uh, of of what is, right? And and that's true. So none of that is untrue, but it also is certainly associated with emotion. And when you, when you look at it and how it's used in the Bible, it's often associated with a kind of a, a juxtaposition of a time of uncertainty or mourning or, or of 
unjoyful time, which turns into joy. So we look at a few of those times among the many that are in the, in the Bible where this word is used. We see in Matthew 28, 8, So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran, in to, bring, and ran to bring the disciples his word. So this was obviously when they were um, in the next morning when Jesus had been uh, placed in the tomb, uh, went there. And it's interesting that they say they, they went quickly from the tomb after finding the tomb empty with fear and great joy. And so that gives us an interesting um, thought about what joy means. And then Luke 1, 13 through 14, it says, But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have, gla- uh, and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. Luke 15, 7, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons, just persons who need no repentance. And then Psalm 35, For his anger is for but a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so all of these examples and more, we see there's a, there's a before and after situation going on here, right? A juxtaposition with, um, with, the, with the end result being joy. So in Matthew, as the women approach the tomb, before they got there, their hearts were heavy and they were in mourning. But after they got there, right, they saw the empty tomb and they had seen the risen Savior and then they experienced this great joy. So it's not just happiness, but it's, there's a contrast that's going on here when this word joy or the concept of joy is being used. Um, it's, it's contrasting sorrow before and then afterwards like a great happiness, like a, a relief, a... Um, certainly an emotional component to that as well. So we see Zacharias in the temple, right? Before meeting the messenger of the Lord, he has this sadness because Elizabeth has been barren their entire marriage, unable to bear a son, um, and and all of that brings with that in that society at that time. And also the, uh, the joy and happiness that comes with having children Zacharias is carrying this into the temple with him, obviously having prayed with his wife to uh, receive a child. Then he's informed while he's in the temple that he will receive a son. And then after uh, John is born, then we see this great joy that comes from that. Um, We see the same thing in Luke 15, with the rejoicing in heaven over one sinner saved, right? So before salvation, we have, we have damnation and condemnation and sorrow and grief over, over the, um, the state of the unsaved, but pri- prior to salvation. Then after salvation, we see eternal life and great joy. Psalm 35, right? The picture of the gospel here, right? God's righteous anger at sin, but before life, or before a life committed to Christ, right? So th- we have this moment where we, we go from one to the other, and what comes before is what brings up or constitutes that greater joy, right? It's, it's certainly emotional, but it's also in direct proportion to our before state. Um, so nothing c- can compare to the juxtaposition of or the contrast of a life before submission to God, right? So the, the, a life before submission to Christ is a life that is that is doomed, that is under God's righteous anger and wrath. But after submission to Christ, we see eternal life and great joy. And so John's motivation in writing this letter is to deliver this message to us, right, that, that will complete our... Um, joy, which means to make sure, to, to bring about the, the completeness of it. It's completed 
So this saving message is that Jesus is the light by which we are saved, right? And so by trusting and committing and submitting to Jesus, we're brought from darkness into the light, and we experience a joy that comes with that because the contrast is so great, right? The, the darkness that was once all-consuming and dooming, now we're in the light with Jesus for an eternity, experiencing his love and his joy. And I think that's a great miraculous transformation that does deserve uh, joy. So hope that's encouraging you f- for you today. Uh, thank you and be blessed.